Hello, where's the fourth ace in a shuffle deck? Well, that's what we're going to find out. So the goal of this video is to find the exact probability that the fourth ace is in the is the nth card in a shuffle deck. Okay. So we're going to derive the exact probability, and then we're also going to simulate the results in our software, just because I think it's informative. And if you do nothing, stick around for the graph of the probabilities when we plot it. It's pretty intriguing. Now this video was kind of spurred on by a YouTuber, and I put a question mark here, and I'll tell you why in a second. Now they submitted a video for 3 Blue 1 Brown's video contest, and they submitted it on paradoxes. And one of the paradoxes is when you have a shuffled deck, and you have one guess of where the fourth ace might be, where would you guess? Well, it turns out that the last card is has the highest probability of that fourth ace. Well, in this video, they gave a great heuristic argument. They didn't calculate it exactly of why you should choose that last card. Well, I watched the video two or three days ago, and as I was watching, I went, oh, I wonder what the exact probability is. And two or three days later, I thought, you know, I'm going to do a video on that. And so I tried to find that video so I could give credit for spurring on this video but I can't find it. So until 3Blue1Brown provides a, the list of people that submitted videos, I, I can't find it. But I will find it and then reference it in, my, in the description of my video. So let's jump into this. And this wouldn't be a statistics video if we didn't create a random variable. So let's let n be the position of the fourth ace in a randomly shuffled deck. And this is how you calculate the probability. So let's let n equal 52. So that's going to, we want the fourth ace to be the last card in the deck. And the way that I think about this is you create two bins. And the last bin has to be an ace. And then in this bin, there's 51 cards. So how many ways can you pick one ace? Well, there's four ways. How many ways can you jumble these cards up? Well, there's 51 factorial. And the way to think about that is the first card laid down, you have 51 choices to pick from. Now, once that first card is chosen, then there's 50 ways to choose the second card and 49 ways to choose the third card. So it's the product of those numbers, which is a factorial. And so the probability that n equals 52 is 51 factorial times 4 over the number of ways you can mix 52 cards, which is 52 factorial. And this reduces to 1 13th. And to me, that's kind of a surprising result. The next time you're playing a card game and you have shuffled decks, then an ace will be on bottom roughly every 13 shuffles. And that's kind of hard to think about for me. Well, in my videos, I want to make sure that you or you leave understanding the calculation that we are doing. So I'm going to go through some more examples. So let's let n equal 51. That means it's the penultimate card in the deck. Penultimate in mathematics means second to last. So we have three bins. We have one non-ace, we have one ace, and then we have 50 cards left over, right? Because that way if the fourth ace is the second to the last card, or the penultimate card in the deck. So here, how many ways can we choose a non-ace? There's 48. How many ways can we choose an ace? Four. How many ways can we jumble up these 50 cards, or it's 50 factorial? So the probability that n equals 51 is the product of these numbers times, or divided by the the number of ways to mix up 52 cards, which is this. And I'm not going to give you the the number. Um, wait for the plot. It is so intriguing. And I'm going to do two more quick examples just to make sure that you can calculate these exactly. So n equals 50. There's going to be three bins of cards. There's going to be two non-aces at the end. Then one ace, right? That makes it third from the last. And then there's going to be 59 cards here. 
Well, the number of ways to pick two non-aces is 48 for the first choice, and then 47 for the second choice. Four ways to pick an ace, and then there's 49 factorial ways to jumble these cards up. And so the probability that n equals 50 is the product of these numbers divided by the, the num total number of ways to mix up 52 cards. And actually, this is a, an application of what's called the fundamental theorem of counting. If you can create little bins, then, and you figure out the number of ways this can happen, and the number of ways then this can happen, the number of ways then this can happen, and then that product is the number of ways that each of those can happen. And it's called the fundamental theorem of counting. And we'll do one more because I'm at the end of my page. So let's let n equal 49. So there's three bins, there's three non aces, one ace. And 48 cards. So the number of ways to choose three non aces is 48 times 47 times 46. Four ways to choose an ace. And there's 48 factorial ways to jumble up these cards. So the probability is uh, that n equals 49 is the product of those numbers divided by the total number of sample size. Okay, so let me jump into our software to finish this video. Hello, we're in R Studio running the R statistical software, and we want to simulate a shuffled deck one million times and then observe the results. And then we're also going to calculate the exact probabilities. So let me run this first of all, and while it's running, I can tell you what it represents. So this first line is a vector of length 52. And in it, we're going to observe the results. So we're going to shuffle a deck, observe where the fourth ace is. And if it's in the nth position, we will increment the nth component of this vector by one each time. And then we'll shuffle the deck again, observe where the fourth ace is, and increment that component of this vector by one, and then do it for a million times. So as I said, shuffles represents the number of times we're shuffling. So we create a for loop from one to shuffle. So we're going to do it one million times. Now in this example, we're really only interested in the four aces. So if we randomly sample four numbers from a one to 52, those would represent the positions of the four aces in the deck. And then we want the largest, so we take the maximum of that sample size 4, we store it to n. Then, in the nth position of our vector, where in deck, we just increment that component by 1. And that's what we did. So now when we observe this vector, where in deck, it tells us the occurrences of our results. And so... Um, this is the 49th component of that vector, so 64,456 times the fourth ace was in position 49. Now, to get a probability, we would have to divide each of these by how many times we shuffled, and this is what it is. And now I'm going to plot these later, and that's where all the information is, but I just want to show you how to access it here in R. And so there's a, a probability of 0 0.076 chance that the fourth ace is in position 42. Now the magic happens when I plot it. And to do that, I have to reduce the sample size. Otherwise, the graphics parameters of, of our studio get upset. So let me plot it, and then I will... Make it big and bring it over. And so this is this is it. This is these are, represent the probabilities of the fourth ace being in this position. And notice that it's exactly increasing. So the highest probability would be in position 52. There's 51. There's 50. And that is a one exactly a one and thirteenth chance that it's in position 52. So if you only get one guess, this is what it is. Now, I want to 
look at the exact probabilities and we do something very similar. We create a vector of length 52 and that's where we're going to store the exact probabilities. And remember on paper where there we kind of had an algorithm. So we develop or create a for loop from 1 to 52 and then we calculate those probabilities. Now I have to create a variable called after fourth ace because when we hit 52, the 52th position, then that pr the product of numbers is, was just a one. So I have to create it if, yeah, and then so and then we just store the exact calculation, and then we're going to plot a dot in the graph where the exact probability is. So we'll run that, and R doesn't like it to be. And so, oops, so let's, let's plot the exact dots here. And here they are. So notice the red dots are so close to the simulated results. And that's because we shuffled the deck one million times and observed the results. And so you're going to get pretty close to the exact theoretical probabilities. And there's a theorem called the law of large numbers that tells us that that's exactly what's going to happen. Well, one thing, when I see this, I start thinking, wow, this, this, these probabilities are exactly symmetric. And so the probability that the first ace is in position one is actually the same as the probability that the fourth ace is 52. And so this is the probability that the first ace is in position two. And so why does that become important? Well, if you're a Texas Hold'em player and you have six players and you want to know the probability that the first ace is in one of those 12 cards, you just sum the these 12 components here and then that's the probability. And that probability is 67% chance that the first ace is in one of those 12 cards. So if you're a Texas Hold'em player, this video or these probabilities would, would help you in those regards. Well, that's all I have for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.